So this is a, a basics look at um, a transistor circuit, all right? So there's tons of different transistor circuits. And uh, I, I wrestled with the idea of teaching uh, transistor amplifiers and stuff, but it's just too broad of a topic. It's just too large. And there are entire textbooks just to, uh, related to uh, transistor amplifiers and stuff. One book that comes to mind is a book called Malvino. And Malvino is a popular book in uh, kind of junior, junior college courses and stuff. Uh, I've got a copy of Malvino, and I, and I have to say I don't like it. Um, it's, really, it's certainly complete, but I think if you study Malvino, I think you get lost very quickly and you lose sight of what's going on. You're kind of buried in equations and you're still really not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, you can pass all the tests and everything, but I, I don't think you get a really good gut understanding of, of what's going on. So I want to kind of teach transistors in a different way. So I'm just going to do some transistor videos once in a while and just give you some basic ideas and stuff. So let's start with this one. Uh, we have 1K resistor coming in and uh, a 1K resistor on the output. So uh, as we know before, uh, transistors need to have some th something going in this way, right? You need to have some base current. And if you have some base current, then uh, that translates into some collector current, right? So if this voltage goes high, you'll, you'll generate some current across this uh, 1K resistor. It'll start turning the transistor on, the transistor will start pulling down, and then you'll start to get current here. And so this voltage will, will, will come down. It'll start high, it, like this transistor wasn't there. It'll start at 10 volts. And then as the transistor turns on, it'll start pulling it down to ground, right? So up here equals down here. So it's always, it's always out of phase. So this is what's called an inverting amplifier, right? Inverting. Positives here end up negatives here. So um, let's go ahead and wire one up. And I'm going to be looking at two places on the this, on this oscilloscope. I'm going to be looking here at the input, and I'm going to be looking here here at the output, okay? And so let's, uh, let me rearrange the camera a bit so I'm on the right side, and we'll take a look at this. All right, so this is what we're going to have coming in. So this is on the input. Remember, that's the input to that 1K resistor. So this voltage is going to go through a 1K resistor and then go to the transistor. So our uh, our vertical scale here is uh, 200 millivolts per division. So let me let me put uh, let me put ground here. So I have a, a sine wave, but it's offset. So it starts at zero, it goes up, and then it comes back down to zero. So it's it it doesn't go plus and minus. It only goes in the plus direction, right? So it goes. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. So it goes up one volt and then down, right? So up a volt, down a volt, up a volt, down a volt, but it never goes below, below zero. And then let's look at the output, all right? And the output will do this. This is two volts per division, so uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, all right? Let's put our Round reference here at the same spot. All right, so um, we start at 10 volts because the transistor isn't on, and then when the transistor turns on, it it pulls it down to ground. Okay, so if we see them uh, both at the same time, the uh, voltage comes up. It turns the transistor on, and then the voltage goes down, and the transistor turns off again. All right, all right. So uh, we're talking about tr voltages going up and voltages going down. Tripping over the camera here. So let's do this waveform instead, okay? We're gonna do a sawtooth waveform. Voltage is gonna ramp up and then it's gonna start over. So we're always going from zero to one volt and then we start over again and go zero to one volt. So we're gonna use that instead, right? So we start with high, and then somewhere the transistor turns on, and it, it stays on, and then we're going to start over, okay? So let's zoom in here and see if we can't see anything interesting, okay? So we're going to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. Let's zoom in about, 
Uh, about here. We'll zoom in about here. So here the transistor is off and then it's starting to turn on and then it's on and then and it's it's on as much as it can be on here. This is what's called saturation. The transistor's gone into saturation. It can't do anything more than pull it all the way down to ground, okay? So when the voltage is high enough, the transistor's in saturation. So let's go ahead and use the, the cursor functions on the oscilloscope. Uh, let's turn some cursors on here and um, let's go ahead and change the frequency a bit. Let me slow it down here. Yeah, let's slow it down to about here. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set one marker where the um, transistor is starting to turn on. I'd say the transistor is starting to turn on right about here. And then it, it starts out slow and it, and it goes faster. The transistor is starting about there. And then, uh, oops, put it back. And then it's saturated. It's saturated right about there, okay? So just turning on and turned on all the way, right? And then we want to know, well, what voltages do those occur at? All right, and so we're gonna, we're gonna cross here. When the voltage is here, that's when the transistor starts to turn on. So that's the voltage. And then the voltage here is when the transistor's on hard, right? So we can just kind of read these things off now. We can say, well, the transistor is starting to turn on when we have 0.584 millivolt, or 584 millivolts, 0 0.5, 0 0.58 volts. And then it's totally saturated by the time we get to 944 millivolts, right? So um, the really, the thing that I want to get across in, in this particular video is a couple concepts. One is that there is a saturation where once you get a, a certain amount of current into the transistor, it's not going to do any more than that. You've totally saturated the uh, saturated the trans transistor. Okay, and you'll see them in the d data sheet. You'll see you'll see numbers about saturation and stuff. Um, and I want to teach you what it means to be saturated. What it means to be saturated is, is it's on all the way, okay? And then there's some threshold here, but uh, a really, really good concept to learn from this video is the nonlinear, uh, nonlinearity of a of a transistor. It does not the 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 blue line here is not a straight line. It doesn't start turning on and then and then continue along a straight line. It has some curve to it, right? And so um, I use the term wiggle in, wiggle out, right? If the input wiggles, then the output wiggles. And uh, in a nice amplifier, if you, if you uh, wiggle on, on the input, you want it to be very, very linear. You want it to be bigger, okay? So this has about a, a 10x gain, right? We go from we go from zero to one volt, and here we're going from 10 volts to zero volts, right? So that's a 10 to one amplification. So you, you could say this is a 10 to one amplifier, but, it, but it's not a linear amplifier. Um, now, if we wanted to make a linear amplifier though, could we use a transistor? Well, we certainly couldn't use it here because it's very, very nonlinear there. Um, you see that as we change the voltage linear here, the voltage changes very nonlinear here, okay? But if we look, if I cover up this part and we look just in this back half, okay? Um, I can put my book there, yeah. If we look over here, we can see that a change in voltage out here equals a change in voltage here, and they both look pretty linear. We know this one's linear because we're generating it, but a straight line here kind of equals a straight line here. So this is what we call the linear region uh, of, of, a, uh, of a transistor, right? So 
If you wanted to build a transistor, you kind of need to operate in the linear region. That's what it means by operating in the linear region. This is the linear region. This is the entire region, okay? But this little section here is the linear region. And so if we wiggle here, then we have a bigger wiggle here, right? A small wiggle here, which is an up and down motion, is a big up and down motion over here. So small signals here, big signals here, and it is a gain of 10, okay? So any change in voltage here equals 10 times that change in voltage down here. And they are both operating sort of in the linear region. So that's, there's some, there's some beginning concepts of transistors. Um, the nonlinear uh, uh, idea, the saturation idea, uh, the linear region. Um, and so it gives you a little, bit of, a little bit of idea of what you're up against when you start to build a transistor. You really can't use this part of it. You can use this part of it. And so uh, in future videos, you'll hear the term biasing. And what does it mean to bias the transistor? Well, the biasing the transistor means to put it into its happy place. And you want to bias the transistor so that you're operating in the linear region. You don't want to be operating here. You want to be operating here. It does limit you. You can only change a voltage in this range here and you get range, uh, something out here. So it does limit you. You can't use the entire thing. You have to use the smaller part. So. Um, biasing gets you to play in this nice linear region and then you worry about gain and other things like that. So anyway, I hope this is a good first video on uh, transistors and uh, I'll try to think of uh, some future ones uh, building on this one.